Hello there, I'm Nesbitt Nikonamu. I work for marketing at JRA, do video, do, I do computer, I do all kinds of nerd stuff. So I'm here to talk to you about AI once more. I'm talking about five things that you shouldn't use AI for in your business, at least at the moment. So AI is a very young technology. It's the new hotness. With any of these technologies, they all kind of go on a journey. Of, of integrating themselves into society. So first you got that initial hype and the hype train is just going and going. It's just chugging along, chugging along. Everybody's like, this is gonna change the world. This is gonna change society. All of our problems will be solved. And then the train flies off the tracks and then it crashes into a valley. People realize those promises that are being made like crazy, most of them are not gonna come true. So that's when there's kind of a backlash to all those promises and all the hype that was made. People say, oh, this was useless. There was no use for this at all. It was just a fad whatever, it's just a novelty. But then after that, things start to cool off and people start to judge it on its own merits. They're not having a bunch of noise. They're not having people tell them what this technology could be. They start to see what it is and then they find the utility in it. So let's look at some other technologies where this has already happened. You've got 3D printing, which when it started out, people were like, we don't need factories anymore. I'm gonna be able to print a car at home. I'm finally gonna be able to have the Mustang from Bullet and I can look like Steve McQueen. A few years have passed. Uh, the printers are cheaper, but I'm no closer to being able to 3D print a car. But I, I bought a 3D printer myself and I've been able to 3D print frames for glasses, like guitar picks, accessories for my camera. You make all kinds of cool little things with it. I'm just not gonna get my Mustang. And, and that's fine, that's fine, it's fine. If we look at another thing, we can look at self-driving cars. People have been promising that for over, over a decade. Uh, saying, oh, it's right around the corner. We're almost there, fully self-driving. You don't have to do anything. You take a nap and, and, and you wake up and you're there. We're not really any closer to that being a reality. However, there are all kinds of innovations that have come from the ultimate goal of having self-driving cars. You have things like Lane Keep Assist, where it'll keep you in your lane, keep you from veering out uh, into the median or, or over the line. Auto braking, so if a car suddenly breaks in front of you and you don't react in time, your car reacts for you. So some really awesome applications that are becoming standard in cars. It's becoming a part of uh, our lives. So now we're on that journey with AI. We've got all these people who are kind of trying to sell you magic beans. There are a lot of applications, like I talked about in my last video, uh, of ways that you can use it, but it, it cannot do everything. So I'm hoping that I can help kind of cut out a lot of the noise about AI and, and, and let you know some of the limitations so you don't invest in something that could potentially hurt you or your business. So the very first thing is don't use it to create branding for your business. So that could be logo generation, like branding on your website, uh, on your vehicles or anything like that. And I'm not just saying this from a uh, ethical or philosophical standpoint um, about the merits of where is this art coming from or anything like that. I'm solely gonna base this on a business decision, which is that it is not copyrightable at this moment in time. February of 2023, US Copyright Office, they ruled that AI generated material could not be copyrightable. Said a machine made it, a human being didn't make it. And you can't represent a machine in court. They don't have, a machine didn't have rights or anything like that. As it stands right now, um, you can't have a copyright on it. So you could say, well, I've, how's anybody gonna be able to prove that? One, there are tools that are getting better and better at identifying if something is AI. You could be getting to a point where Google starts to know when a there is AI content uh, on somebody's website or things like that, and it might start to ping you. We're in the legal wild west right now, but it could be a situation where somebody could take you to court uh, and they could successfully argue this uh, AI model is trained on something they made and they receive no compensation. It could be a huge mess and one that you probably shouldn't involve yourself with. I think the alternative here could be going on Fiverr or a website like that. Find somebody freelance to make you a logo. You, you can do it on the cheap these days. So number two is you should probably not use it for any kind of data-based decision-making. There is a really interesting thing happening with ChatGPT right now. There was a, a study that was done uh, comparing version 3.5 and version 4, they gave them both the same equations to solve. In version 3.5, it solved it with like 90 something percent accuracy. And version 4 solved it with like 20% accuracy. It's getting worse at doing math, uh, kind of like me. Do not use it for data. Do not use it to try to solve math equations or anything like that. Don't use an AI model that is trained on the entire internet uh, to make fact-based decisions. The data that is on the internet um, mostly came from human beings, and human beings 
we mess up all the time. We make all kinds of mistakes. We'll say, we say whatever. In a lot of ways, it's kind of hats off to them because they've imitated human beings so well, they've gotten to the point where they can BS people super effectively. You could say, well, I'm gonna go back to 3.5. It was, it seemed to be better at it. Um, but if you're dealing with data, if you're dealing with like factual, empirical data, 99% uh, accuracy might as well be 0% accuracy. If, you, if you're a scientist and you're trying to send people to the moon, uh, and your calculations are 99% accurate. I'm sorry, uh, but those people are dead now. They are floating in space. Oops. I mean, to, to really drive my point home, if I go in and I ask it how many vowels are in my name, it is frequently incorrect. But to be fair, a lot of people have trouble with my name, so, uh, you know, can I get that angry at it? I don't know. So number three is doing anything that relies on up-to-date information. So the same thing as you don't want to do anything that's data-based, uh, another point of data can, to consider is time itself. You, you don't want to have anything where timeliness is important in your calculations. These models, they do not update in real time. They get to a point based on the information that has been fed into them, because they don't want to just, if you update it in real time, it could very quickly just go out of control and completely eat itself. So they kind of have to do it incrementally. And if I were to say, what were the Panthers, what was their uh, record in the NFL last season? So there are two things that could happen. It could say, um, our information is only accurate up to 2021. What we tell you may not be accurate. Or it could just give me something and it could be completely wrong. <laughs> you, you aren't gonna be able to like be kept up to date on the world at large necessarily based on the stuff that you're, you're asking at. So number four is you don't want to share any kind of personal information with it. So a thing that you definitely should not do, with this being such a young technology, the cybersecurity on AI tools is like a little all over the place, where there's not really been enough time to develop these things. And it, it is moving so fast, these things keep being updated so much. We haven't even like scratched the surface on, on knowing what is at risk and what's not. So the thing about these AI models is you are using them, but they're also using you. It's a mutually beneficial uh, relationship. A lot of you probably have the question like, things like ChatGPT, these things are so powerful, but like how come I can get in for free? It's because you are helping to train it. If you are, say, using it to, to just like vent maybe, uh, you're like, man, things are really tough right now, and you start, you're like, whatever, they, you know, it's just AI, I, I can just say whatever to it. It's not gonna judge me or, or it's not gonna, it's not gonna spill the beans to anybody. Thing is, it might be able to, in things like ChatGPT, it saves your history. It saves the things that you, your prompts that you put into it. So you definitely don't wanna mention any kind of sensitive information uh, that you don't want anybody else to know about. You don't wanna be putting into one of these, these uh, AI programs. So before I get to tip number five, I just wanna mention, uh, at JRA, we offer junk removal marketing services. We will build you a beautiful website with SEO to go with it. We build out really incredible Google Ads campaigns. And we also have great industry partners such as Workies who will set you up with the standard for uh, CRM software in the junk removal industry, as well as all booked up for all of your call center needs. So click the link below, check out the website, see what you think. But finally, on to point number five, innovating in your business. If you're looking to disrupt your industry, asking an AI bot to come up with ways to do that is probably not the way to go. As I've harped on this entire video, it's trained on things that it's gotten from all over the internet. So whatever idea it's gonna spit out at you, it probably got from somewhere else. Yes, it is a really good resource for kind of breaking out of like a hump, kind of getting, getting some ideas going, but just know that whatever ideas you do get from it, somebody else probably came up with it first. So there is a lot of benefit to imitation as well as innovation. Just keep in mind, it's gonna be a lot more the former than the latter. So that's it. Those are five things to really keep in mind uh, and, and to be really wary of when considering using AI in your business. This is not to crap on AI. I think there's a lot of awesome uses for AI. I think it's really exciting technology. I just think there are also people who are trying to sell you some magic beans. You wanna be really careful about how you utilize this in your business. So before you guys go, I would love down in the comments to hear what your thoughts are about the future of AI. Do you think that it's, it, it is this, this cure-all, it's gonna fix everything? Uh, do you think that it is just a fad or do you think it's somewhere in between? I would love to hear from you down in the comments. And if you really like this video, please like, subscribe, check out the other videos on this channel. We got a lot of really wonderful resources. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll, I'll talk to you next time.